we go. <laughs> Grace, peace, compassion, and courage be with you all. Uh, those of you in the Northwest Intermountain Synod, those of you joining us from places far and wide, the gift of a digital gathering. What a fun thing. Welcome to Compline Prayer, uh, this second week of the season of Lent. Thank you for joining us in this time for singing, for prayer, for storytelling, um, for commending our day and our week back to God and trusting the coming week into God's care. We are extra blessed to have Bishop Megan Manlove of the Northwest Intermountain Synod here with us in my home. What a treat. And uh, this is like the a, a culminating treat of the whole week where um, Bishop Megan has been in town. Uh, and so what a joy. So thanks for being here. Yeah. Yep. As always, uh, with this Compline ritual, we use the rite in Evangelical Lutheran worship. It begins on page 320. And especially if you've never prayed this or sung this, or if you've never like taken a moment at the end of the day to quiet yourself, however you're arriving, welcome. Maybe the week has been filled with obligations and busyness. Um, it's late February. Um, and who knows um, what your week has been filled with. Maybe your week was more quiet and still. However you're arriving into this space, be welcome here. We're very glad to have you together with us. In these weeks, as we do Compline um, as a synod, we are also lifting up uh, indigenous authors. Um, we are so blessed to have a very vast synod land-wise, and that encompasses so many landed stories, so many rooted uh, experiences, and we look to our indigenous siblings um, to understand all that landedness. And so tonight we're going to share a story from the Lakota people called Gift Horse by S.D. Nelson. So you can look forward to that in a moment. For now, we begin on page 320. Uh, and as I said last week, you know, this Facebook um, live form, it's imperfect because I can't hear you sing back, but that's okay. I trust that you are. And again, this isn't about like singing perfectly. We're just together um, sharing this moment in prayer. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Our hymn to welcome nightfall will be number 565 in ELW possibly familiar to many of you, maybe not. All praise to thee, my God, this night. You're welcome to sing in canon, even though I won't know if you are or not, but <laughs> enjoy that if you want to sing that way. Yeah. All praise to thee, my God, this night for all the blessings of the light. Keep me, oh, keep me, King of kings, beneath thine own almighty wings. Forgive me, Lord, for thy dear Son, the ill that I this day have done, that with the world myself and thee, I ere I sleep at peace may be. Teach me to live that I may dread the grave as little as my bed. Teach me to die that so I may rise glorious at the awesome day. Oh, may my soul in thee repose and may sweet sleep mine eyelids close. Sleep that shall me more vigorous make to serve my God when I awake. 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Held in God's abundant love, we're bold to confess our sin and receive God's mercy. Holy and gracious God, I, I confess, confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some, some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Christ Jesus, in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Amen. Tonight's psalm comes from the psalm appointed for this coming Sunday in the Revised Common Lectionary. Um, a portion of a psalm we probably know pretty well, Psalm 22, but... The portion of the psalm we will hear tonight is where the psalm turns from deep abandonment into praise. So I'll read the odd verses. Would you read the even verses? Mm -hmm. Psalm 22, beginning with verse 23. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. The other uh, song we'll offer tonight is one kind of designed for evening prayer in this way and uh, designed to lift up prayers for the world. It's called Watch, O Lord. It comes out of a liturgy created by Marty Haugen and Susan Briel, who's well known to our synod, uh, Unfailing Light. But it's in All Creation Sings, number 996. And there's a kind of a refrain and then a leader and assembly part. So you can catch catch on and sing along, even if you don't have a copy of All Creation Sings in front of you. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. And part of the gift and thing I love about Compline Prayer is like, it turns us toward not just all of us who get to go to bed, but like it turns mm -hmm. our attention prayerfully to people who will be working or, you know, up worrying late at night and that God is with them as well. So. Hymn 996 and all creation sings. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Tend your ailing ones. In your love, Lord, rest your weary ones. In your love, Lord, 
Bless your dying ones in your love, O Lord of all. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Soothe your suffering ones in your love, Lord. Heal afflicted ones in your love, Lord. Shield your joyous ones in your love, O Lord of all. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Hold your grieving ones in your love, Lord. Raise your fallen ones in your love, Lord. Mend your broken ones in your love, O Lord of all. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Guard your little ones in your love, Lord. Guide your searching ones in your love, Lord. Grant us all your peace in your love, O Lord of all. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. I know probably many of you thought of specific people when you thought of little ones or the joyous or the suffering and today I was around a table with a colleague who had to do a funeral for a very small child this week and my prayers extend to Pastor Walter and the family of this dear child tonight. So it's on my mind. Um, a brief reading before we turn to our story from Romans 8. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. That was my confirmation verse, so I like it. <laughs> this is A Gift Horse, a Lakota story as told by S.D. Nelson. The thing I remember most from my early days is a horse, a gift horse horse. My father had always been away visiting and trading with our friends, the Cheyenne. When he came home, he rode into camp with new horses trailing behind him, and the whole village turned out to welcome him. Singling out a pony, he called to me. This, my son, is the horse for a boy who is becoming a man and a Lakota warrior. As the young horse came forward, she nickered and stamped her hooves. She tossed back her head and perked up her ears. She was the blue-gray color of a thunderstorm, and her back was a blur of white spots like hailstones raining down. There are those beautiful Midwestern thunderstorms that are hard to replace. I named my horse Storm. Wakan Tanka, the great spirit who is in all things, had already painted her like a summer hailstorm. With mixed paints, I added yellow thunderbolts and placed a red handprint on her hip. I circled her eye with a red band so she would see straight and true. 
Finally, I tied eagle feathers in her flowing mane. We spent all of our days together. I was already a good rider, but on storm, I became like the wind. Across the open wide prairie we rode, beneath an endless sky of blue. People said the dust we stirred up looked like a flying cloud on the earth, and so they began to call me Flying Cloud. There were many games we boys played on horseback. We practiced with our bows and arrows, we wrestled. Sometimes we played rough and we were not from our horses. I always climbed right back on storm. This was good training for us because when we became Lakota warriors, we would need to defend our people from our enemies. Also, we needed to become successful buffalo hunters. If we failed at hunting the buffalo, our people might starve to death during the bitter cold of winter. Early one morning, I sneaked out of my family's teepee and rode far away from camp. I knew I was not supposed to go, but I wanted to prove that I could hunt as well as any man. At first, the snow-covered ground made the, fresh, made the fresh deer tracks easy to follow, but then north wind began to howl. I dismounted for a closer look. Suddenly, three deer appeared. I shot one of my arrows, but my fingers were cold and I missed. Soon the gusting wind turned to a raging prairie blizzard. Storm whinnied and nudged me from behind. Her eyes held a look I had never seen before. Fear. My fingers were numb from cold, but somehow I managed to mount Storm. The snow was blowing so hard I could not see my hand in front of my face. We are lost, I shouted. I wrapped my arms around the horse's neck. She was warm, just like my parents' teepee. Storm, take us home, I cried. Together we trudged into the darkness of the blizzard. We wandered for a long, long time. I was freezing and ready to give up when I noticed that Storm had stopped. There before us was my family's teepee. Storm had brought us home. She saved my life. That blizzard taught me to think before acting. My mother saw that I had learned an important lesson. She told me I was becoming a man and that I would soon be ready to wear the shirt of a warrior. She promised to make one decorated with beadwork and porcupine quills, but I would have to collect the quills. After many days of hunting, I finally found a porcupine. He was bristling with sharp spines. I could have killed him with one of my stone tip arrows, but I only needed some of his quills. I threw a small blanket across his back. When I pulled it away, the cloth was filled with a forest of quills. Before my mother could use the quills, she had, first she had to make the shirt. The women and girls of our tribe tanned the animal hides that the hunters brought back to camp. They stitched them together to make many things, including all of our clothing and the lodge skins for our teepees. That spring, when the little green growing things began to show themselves, my mother and sister began sewing a warrior shirt for me. They used fine antelope hide and decorated it with beads and porcupine quills. I've spotted porcupine over at Turnbull Wildlife Refuge here in Spokane. <laughs> also that spring, to prepare me for becoming a warrior, my father took me to the sweat lodge with him. I sat in a circle with many men of my tribe. Several large stones, which had been heated in the fire, were brought in and placed in a pit in the center of the lodge. The buffalo skin door flap was closed and the darkness surrounded us. Old Yellow Bear, the medicine man of our tribe, used a turtle shell to pour water over the glowing stones. They hissed and spat, steam filled the lodge. In the darkness, the men began to sing ancient songs that I had never heard before. It was so hot that sweat flowed down over my whole body. I felt wonderfully clean. Yellow Bear told me I was now ready to go on a journey of the spirit, a vision quest. Oh, sorry. I'll show you that picture. <laughs> I spent four days alone, praying on a distant hillside without food and water. I slept under the stars. I felt the pain of hunger and was very thirsty. I missed storm. 
Each day I prayed to Father Sun and Sister Moon and to the star people. I asked Wakan Taka to teach me the lessons that would make me strong and a good person. On the third night, a vision came. All of the four-legged creatures like deer, coyote, and buffalo are my brothers. I saw that all of the winged creatures like hawk and hummingbird are my sisters. Even the creepy crawlers like lizard and spider are my relatives. I dreamed that, along with all the creatures, we two-legged be beings danced together in the circle of life. It was time to return to my village. My vision quest was over and I had taken another step toward becoming a man, but I still had not earned the right to wear the shirt of a Lakota warrior. <clears throat> on the prairie, there were as many buffalo as there are leaves on a tree. My father told me there was no greater honor than providing meat and buffalo robes for our people. The time had come for me to join the men of my tribe in the hunt. I remember how the earth shook under the stampeding hooves. My stomach was upside down with fear and excitement. Then storm drew up alongside a large bull and for a moment we were galloping together. I shot my arrows and they flew straight and true. Suddenly, before me, a huge buffalo lifted a horse and rider into the air. The bull turned them over onto the earth. The terrified horse bolted away, and I knew the angry buffalo would attack the helpless man. Turning storm, I galloped to the rescue. We rode up just as the bull charged. With one hand, I grasped storm's neck, and with the other, I reached out. Using all of my strength, I swung the man up behind me, and we rode to safety. Later, as I stood over my first buffalo, I was so proud, I howled like a wolf. I knelt down by my buffalo brother and thanked him for giving up his life so that my people could eat. I thanked him for his hide and told him it would make a fine robe to keep us warm in the cold of winter. Oh, sorry, you should see that picture. <laughs> We cut up the meat and wrapped it in buffalo hides. Everyone helped, men, women, and children. We loaded the bundles onto pony drags and hauled them all back to our village. As we traveled, my people made up a song. They sang about how a horse named Storm and a boy called Flying Cloud had rescued a fallen warrior from the charging buffalo. My father told me I had a courageous heart. He said that I was no longer a boy, but that I was not yet a man either. There was one more thing I needed to do. I had to face the enemy with the heart of a warrior. That night, we celebrated with a great feast and a buffalo dance. This page is all picture. Great dance. Many tribes lived on the Great Plains. Some of them, like the Cheyenne, were our friends, but others, like the Crow, were our enemies. Early one morning while we slept, Crow horse thieves attacked. I woke up to shouting and the pounding of hooves. Most of our horses were stolen. That morning, as the sun rose in the east, angry tears filled my eyes. How could those thieves dare to steal my precious storm? We put together our own raiding party, our men planned to get back our horses and punish the thieves by stealing as many crow ponies as possible. We traveled on foot, following the trail left by our stolen horses. I prayed to Wakantanka to return Storm safely to me. Days later, we reached the crow village. The sky was growing dark and a fierce thunderstorm was coming up. At first, I was afraid that the storm would ruin our rescue effort, but then I thought of my storm and knew that Wakantanka was answering my prayer. The thunder beings beat their thunder drums overhead and threw spears of lightning to earth. Rain poured down, soaking us to the bone, but allowing us to sneak up on our enemies. Yep. West wind roared the treetops as we drew near our beloved horses. The men from my tribe dashed to the rescue. Hail pelted my face and shoulders. Lightning flashed as bright as day. 
In the glare, I saw my storm and the crow warrior who had guarded her. Thunder pounded overhead. I prayed for courage as I raced my horse. Lightning flashed again as I knocked over the crow guard and jumped on storm. With my fingers clutching her mane, we disappeared into the wild night. I felt a crow arrow whiz past my ear, but I never looked back. Yelping like a coyote, I helped chase the entire horse herd back home. The night was a great victory for our warriors. Upon our return, I was given the shirt of a Lakota warrior. To my surprise, on the front, my mother and sister had quilled the beautiful image of my best friend. In the years that followed, Storm and I shared many adventures, too many to tell. And so with my gift horse, I rode from boyhood into manhood. One thing I will never forget from my early days so long ago is the horse with eagle feathers tied in her mane and the red handprint of a boy. I can still see the two of us riding across the endless prairies of our youth, like a hailstorm in a flying cloud. The end. Again, that was Gift Horse, as told by S.D. Nelson. A story and prayer for all those crossing thresholds of life. <laughs> we continue with um, a litany of prayer on page 323. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Guide us, waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Guide us, waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. As always, you're welcome to place prayer requests in the chat of this live stream and we will endeavor to gather them um, together in our own prayers. <clears throat> Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. We hold before you, O oh God, all those that this community has on their hearts, those who need an extra measure of your advocacy, your justice, your compassion, your healing. Tonight I pray for my friend Walter and the family he is caring for in their deep loss. 
all things we hold before the good and broken heart of your dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who taught us to pray, and we will pray singing. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we hope you can join us for the remaining Thursdays in Lent. The Lord bless you and keep you. The, Lord face, the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord fill you with courage for these Lenten days and grant you peace. Amen. Have a peaceful night and we will see you in a week.